do 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 It's Attack of the Killer Marshmallow! Just kidding. Starting back on the original Nintendo Game Boy, Kirby saw his first game release with Kirby's Dream Land. Now, this didn't create a whole lot of waves back then, which was the early 90s, and to be honest, I remember playing it as a kid on that old, glorious, monochrome green screen. But it really didn't stick in my head that much. Well, the majority of original Game Boy games really didn't either. Maybe it's because I never owned one, or because we had much more playtime with the console systems of the time. A great start to the series, but who knew back then what HAL Laboratory had created? In 1993, we saw the release of Kirby's Adventure on the original NES. Kirby's first true adventure. By the time it came out though, the super motherfucking Nintendo had already been on the market for at least two years. So by that time, nobody was really paying that much attention to NES releases and whatnot. So back then, we played it. But the vast majority of our attention was on the super motherfucking Nintendo. In the intervening years, I've gone back and played it more and more. And it really is a good NES game even if it was released at the end of the NES's life cycle. Let's do this! The storyline is pretty simplistic. One day, Kirby is taking a nap, and is unable to have dreams. He journeys to the Fountain of Dreams, and discovers that King Dedede has stolen the Star Rod, which controls said fountain, and broke it into several pieces, giving a piece to each of his minions. Kirby sets off to recapture each piece of the rod, and restore dreams to everyone in Dreamland. There are seven worlds in the game, each separated into five to six stages, including a boss fight. As you complete each stage, it opens up more of the world for you to explore, including simple and fun minigames, usually based on carnival games that can net you one-ups. Each world is varied in its design and theme. There's coastal areas, jungles, the wild west, floaty clouds, and grassy fields. Being on the NES, the controls are as simple as they get. Kirby can run around, jump, and by sucking in and holding air, he can fly indefinitely. Let's talk about Kirby's inhuman inhaling. It's his most known ability. By holding down the B button, Kirby opens his big yapper and will inhale anything in his... <laughs> and will inhale anything in his immediate vicinity. This includes mainly enemies, but other things as well. By sucking up enemies, Kirby can swallow them by pressing down on the D-pad, and you absorb the enemy ability a la Mega Man. There are a total of 26 available powers in the game, which is pretty damn good considering it's an NES game. You can also shoot them back out as a star shot simply by pressing the B button again. Absorbing enemy abilities. Almost every enemy in the game will give Kirby a different offensive attack based on different qualities like fire, ice, and electricity. There are also other types of weapons like boomerangs, swords, and then... Umbrella? Whatever. Anyways, this creates a vastly different experience for every player, as you can pretty much pick and choose which weapons you get and when and to deal with whatever enemies or bosses you want. Speaking of bosses, they're a cakewalk, and Kirby loves cake! Seriously though, they're nothing to talk about. <clears throat> Although the iconic boss of the series, Wispy, does appear as the boss of the first world. While the graphics are absolutely great for a later released NES game, the music really shines as well. Kirby's iconic theme, featured in the first level of the game, and replayed later on in different stages, is so memorable and fun. Just try playing through the first level and not getting that tune stuck in your head for at least an hour or two after you stop playing. make it to the end of the game, kick King Dedede's ass, and restore the power of Dream to Dreamland. Such a classic from the NES days, even though it was released when it was. 
That's the nice thing about games that come out near the end of a console's life cycle. Programmers know the system very well by that point. It can make some kick-ass shit. And Kirby's Adventure is a great example of that. With fun gameplay, good controls, cool weapons, and awesome music, everything works. If you've never played it, you're missing out on one of the 8-bit gems. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Go check it out.